Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. If you wouldn't mind now taking your seats. And we will get this evening's awards underway. Good evening, my Lord Lieutenant, High Sheriff, your worships, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Celebrating Success. I have to say it is my absolute honor to be here tonight. My name is Sasha Twining. I've worked in television and radio for uh, actually 29 years this month. So I am a member of the dreaded media and uh, I never know when I turn up to an event whether I should apologize for that, whether you see me as a friend or a foe, but I hope tonight very, very much a friend. Um, I, as I say, I've worked in the media for 29 years um, in this country and across the world. And I hope you don't mind, but I'd just like to take this opportunity to say that wherever I am, um, I, I will always stand in awe of yourselves and all your colleagues. And I think, particularly after the last year that we have had, not necessarily just locally, but over the last year, I think the, uh, the entire firefighting family is in everyone's hearts at the moment. And so thank you very much for inviting me to be here tonight because it is an absolute honor to be here. Thank you. Now, before I actually get started properly, I sort of feel I ought to do a bit of fire safety uh, information myself. <laughs> so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, there are no planned fire drills for this evening. You'll be very pleased to know. But if you do hear the fire alarm, does anybody want to finish the line? Uh, please make your way to the nearest available exit and the assembly point. Would anyone like to tell me where the assembly point is? Front of the building. Who said the bar? <laughs> So this evening we are here to celebrate the best and the most dedicated staff in Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service and of course the partner organisations that provide such support as well. We are also live streaming tonight's event, uh, so welcome if you are watching us tonight online and if you are, if you'd like to share any of your thoughts or opinions on this evening or indeed any photographs as well, we do have a hashtag for you this evening for social media. If you would uh, please use the hashtag celebrating success when you do post anything online. And incidentally, I'll let you know later in the evening how you can actually watch back some of uh, tonight's event as well. Let's start things off. Let's remind us why we are here this evening and give you a flavor of tonight's awards. Working for the Hampshire Fire and Rescue is obviously quite a privilege for me because you get to see people who are helping all others in the community every single day. It's energetic, um, interesting, there's passion which I love because not only do people have pride for working for the fire service, they, they, they're interested in what they do. I very much enjoy serving our local community. I very much enjoy seeing people in our community that we have had a direct effect on their lives. Well, I, I like volunteering with uh, Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service because I think they're a great bunch of people to work for. I feel that like I'm being helpful in the community and hopefully I'm actually doing something worthwhile in the community. I think the service has a great link and relationship and partnership with our charities. When you sign up for the fire service, you are signing up because you want to help. It's not just about the emergency calls. They needed that little bit of help and I think the fact that they had people that cared for what happened to her family. She just couldn't get over why someone would do that or, uh, and we're like, well, why wouldn't we do it? Why wouldn't we help somebody else that needed that help? There's a, a lot of great teams in Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service doing some really, really good work. Um, to even be considered uh, for this type of award um, is, is really good. It puts a smile on your face and, and makes you realise that 
even though sometimes what we do is hard work, we enjoy it and it's nice to be recognised. You know, it validates that what I'm doing actually helps um, and that I'm making a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to stage your Chief Officer, Dave Curry. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Um, it always makes me feel emotional just before I come out and speak, uh, uh, being so proud of being your Chief Fire Officer and seeing such wonderful work from our service. Um, it always makes me smile as well when uh, Sasha and other people that host us and come and host us talk about fire safety. Two things you should know, Sasha. Um, if there is a building on fire, you don't want to follow the firefighters because they're always going into the building rather than going out. And if you're inside the building trying to get out, the, the ultimate aim is that you would end up all in the bar and, and you wonder what you're all doing there. So, uh, so uh, watch out for, for the fire precautions, but I'm glad there's no uh, tests or, or I'm sure we're all very safe this evening. I'm very pleased as well, um, Steve Power has you may have you've been before um, supported this and, and hosted us and facilitated with, uh, with expertise over the years and, uh, and we're, I was just talking to Sasha and, and uh, we've now moved on to the BBC from Wave 105 and uh, if Steve is watching uh, via the live stream we thank him for that but we're very uh, appreciative of Sasha and um, BBC Solent for supporting our event and coming this evening. Um, the, um, I'd really like to uh, add my welcome to the 12th, um, 12th Celebrating Success Awards evening. It's a very special evening for the service. Um, this is a very special evening for me. Um, some of you may know, uh, hopefully by now, that uh, I'm retiring at the end of December, and so this will be my last Celebrating Success. So I'm really going to enjoy this moment, and, uh, and please bear with me as I do. Um, I'd like to extend a really warm welcome to everybody in the room. Um, it's, it's great to see so many faces from, the, from our service and our partners, but it's a special warm welcome to Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant, Nigel Atkinson, who's going to join me on stage later to present the Queen's Long Service and Good Conduct Medals. We're also uh, joined on stage later on by our very own Chairman of our Fire Authority, Councillor Chris Carter, who will be presenting the long dedicated service and partnership awards. Um, joining us also this evening is uh, Her Honourable Mrs Mary Montague Scott, um, High Sheriff of Hampshire, um, and our wor Worship, uh, the Mayor of Eastleigh, Councillor Maureen Sollett, accompanied by Mr Roy Sollett, so you're very welcome this evening. Also, we have uh, an distinguished lineup of guests with us this evening to celebrate our awards. We have the Police and Crime Commissioner, uh, Michael, Al uh, Michael Allen, and also his wife, Alison. Her Majesty's Inspectorate, uh, Matt Parr, who has now just become the Inspector of Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. Matt, I'm sure um, you'll be impressed by this evening's events and uh, taking notes for, the, for future inspections of us, and I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you could join us, and you're very welcome. Um, the Chief Constable, our very good friend, Olivia Pinkney, who joins us this evening as well. Um, and Philip Astle is the Chief Operating o uh, Officer of South Central Ambulance and again close partners with the work that we do in the community and you're all very welcome this evening. Again as well we thank um, Exxon and uh, Sprue Safety for sponsoring our event. They have done for many years. Um, I'm not sure how many of the 12 years but it's probably a more than half of those years that Exxon and Sprue Safety have joined us and also sponsored this evening's events, and we're very appreciative um, of that continued support of us. I'd also like to thank uh, the Constabulary for the venue this evening. We've used this over the last couple of years, um, and it, we're really, really appreciative. I think on Monday, um, phase two of our own joint headquarters, the work start there, and I hope that you, maybe not I, but you, celebrate the success of our service uh, next year in the new facilities, the new conference facilities that will be built over the next six or nine months. We were very appreciative of this really lovely accommodation, which um, uh, has, it has special memories for me, not only celebrating success over a few years, but uh, you may or may not know, this is the Com uh, Gold Command Centre, so I've spent in this building and Vickery's house many a long night in um, snow conditions and flood conditions and the likes managing major incidents on behalf of the county. So it has mixed memories 
but uh, we're very appreciative of the, the hosting of, of this event tonight. Um, before I start uh, talking about the service um, and the celebrations of the service, there's one person I do want to mention this evening, um, particularly just for us to remember his name. Um, one of our firefighters from Haven and Emsworth sadly uh, passed away earlier this week on Monday evening. Um, I was supporting him and I know Brian Lee and colleagues from Haven and Emsworth were supporting him and his family over the weeks of his illness. Um, and sadly, Gary passed away um, on Monday evening. And I know colleagues in the room and myself um, are in touch with the family and our thoughts are with him and his family um, uh, at this difficult time. Selling, celebrating success uh, is always a highlight in our calendar and I do look forward to the opportunity to celebrate the contribution of our people and our partners. We must always, and please, as I move on, always remember it's not our buildings, it's not the vehicles, it's not the equipment that makes our great fire service. Um, it is our great people. And tonight we'll hear some great examples of the contribution of those people. It's the people that make the service the, what it is today. This clearly, as I've said, is that my last and therefore it holds great significance for me as I move forward into retirement and therefore I know it will be my last opportunity to thank you publicly for the great support you have given me as your Chief Fire Officer. It will also be the last opportunity for me to present some awards um, and it's hard to particularly express the pride and honour that it has been on, over the years to celebrate the achievements of some of our teams. Um, it is humbling each year um, to see the commitment that individuals and teams make beyond what is expected of them. And it's great that we can just pause for a moment each year and celebrate that individual and team achievement. I've been speaking lately, maybe as I reflect on my own career, about the ethos of public service. What does public service actually mean? The essence of why we do what we do, why we run into a burning building, or we deal with an emergency situation, or we care for the vulnerable in our community in just the way we do. It's not just a job, I've concluded that, and I've concluded recently it's not even a vocation. Um, I think it's more of a calling, a deep-seated belief in caring and protecting for others. And interestingly, in the, the DVD, as we just heard, individuals unprompted from my service talking about their feelings of care for others and protecting others. And I think that's very special. It's special in a public service and it's extra special in the fire service. The individuals that are recognised tonight, both from within and outside the service, have shown exemplary public service and that ethos in abundance. And I'm sure we will celebrate some really great examples as we mo move through the awards. Another example this, uh, this year of incredible public service and that ethos has been the fire service response to the tragic incidents of Grenfell Tower which was, as we know, an unprecedented incident. London Fire Brigade, led by Danny Cotton, holds in my highest esteem the way she led an organisation to deal with that incident and then the aftermath. Um, but also, I'm equally proud of Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service's response to ensure our residents uh, were reassured and that high-rise buildings received ch uh, safety checks which made me feel really proud as the Chief Fire Officer. I boldly went on the news that, uh, uh, a week after the incident and said that Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service would visit every single high-rise building in this county. Um, my teams, after the interview, said 171 of them scratched his head. And I think we've just about achieved that. We have been to every high-rise building in Hampshire, um, and I'm really pleased that we could respond so quickly and so positively in the light of that tragic incident. However, I know that all achievements, um, all the achievements and the above and beyond commitments which we will celebrate tonight, in whatever form, would not have been achieved without 
the genuine support of family and friends. I've grown to understand the important role that families and loved ones play in supporting the delivery of our service. Loved ones who show such patience and are so supportive when our time and thought in the service is absorbed by the duties that we hold. And sadly, on many occasions, that support extends to emotional support for colleagues who face trauma in the role that they play in the community. I certainly recognise that and really appreciate with special fondness that from my own wife, Lynn, who joins us here this evening. Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service has had another successful year, making progress on many fronts with, with the rollout of new technologies and equipment. Some of the rollout has not been smooth and we continue to learn lessons. I've come to realise that if you are prepared to make progress and cut new ground, that implementation of change and introduction of new technologies will not always be smooth. The key thing for me is to really listen to the people of your organisation, respond and ensure people move with you rather than because of you. And it's a really strong ethos I know that I share with Neil as he moves into the role of Chief Officer. But I'm very proud of being a Chief Officer that has led a service that hasn't settled for status quo and won't do, but has been brave enough and confident enough to listen, try new things, listen again and then adapt. And that achieves progress informed by the professionals that fill our great service. So tonight, it's all about the, the awards recipients. It's all about celebrating the achievement of many in the organisation. And as I said, it's a humbling experience for me. But you as loved ones and family members and other colleagues in the room, you have a job to do th this evening as well. I want to hear you cheer loudly as your loved ones come to the stage and receive their award. Remember, this is a very, very special evening for them that they and you will hold in your minds probably for the rest of their careers and beyond. So let's really make a noise for them as they come on stage and let's make th this evening really memorable for them. Once again, I'm honoured to play a part in presenting some of these awards for the very last time. So therefore, with that, my thanks and I'll hand back to Sasha. Thank you, Sasha. Dave, thank you. And already, already I, I, I can see the emotion is, uh, is beginning to, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please now welcome on stage the Chairman of Hampshire Fire and Rescue Authority, Councillor Chris Carter. Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome. It's, it's so good to see so many of you here this, this evening. It really is a, 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 a true honor and a privilege uh, for me to be here again as chairman of the authority um, to be part of these, the, these proceedings as we celebrate the inspiring work of the people who have worked so tirelessly and with such dedication to make the people of Hampshire safe. This year, more than ever, the extraordinary work of the fire service has been brought into focus. Um, you heard mentioned just now about um, Grenfell Tower, and those, uh, those tragic events um, have emphasized the bravery and courage and commitment of firefighters across the land. This is something that can easily be taken for granted, but these events have remind us, uh, reminded us just how fortunate we are to have such selfless people who are willing to put themselves in harm's way. Here in Hampshire this year um, has been a really special year. Um, we have a new generation of firefighters, um, the first in I think probably 10 years. Um, and also, of course, we say goodbye to Dave Curry. <laughs> However, um, uh, what Dave will hand over to his successor, Neil Odin, 
is I believe, and I suppose you could say I'm biased, um, the finest fire and rescue service, certainly in the country, perhaps in the world. Um, and we've got the most passionate and professional people that, that, that I've met. And I, I can't honestly say I've been to all the fire stations, but I've been to quite a few. And those of you that I've met, I'm so impressed with you. I'm particularly, I will be particularly delighted tonight again to present the Chairman's Award later this evening. And I never tire of hearing of the inspiring stories that lay behind all of the awards that will be given out tonight. I'm proud to lead such a thriving organisation. On behalf of the authority, I should give it its full title, shouldn't I? Hampshire Fire and Rescue Authority. I would like to pass on my thanks to all the staff who have contributed to making life safer for everybody in Hampshire. I hope you all enjoy the evening. And please do, um, as Dave said, cheer loudly when everybody comes up on stage. Thank you, everybody. And so, ladies and gentlemen, on with the awards. Our first section this evening is all about celebrating our people. Now, this is a very varied list that we have for you now, ranging from sporting achievements to long service awards, but there is a common thread that runs through all these awards, commitment to the service, absolute commitment. Now, our first award this evening was introduced just a few years ago to recognize an individual or a team for their commitment to the Services Sports and Social Association. Now, the award has been nominated by our Executive Committee, so please welcome the Deputy Chief Officer, Neil Odin, to stage. Thank you. <laughs> Neil, thank you. Let me give you a, a few clues to our, uh, our winning recipient tonight. There's quite a lot of them. They raised quite a lot of money and they did something to honour those in the Second World War. Congratulations to the Cockle Shell Challenge team. Ladies and gentlemen, well done, guys. Please welcome on stage Craig and Kieran, Martin, Jasper and Mark. Gentlemen, come this way. too modest to tell you but uh, they have raised so far gentlemen thank you over 14,000 pounds for four different charities thank you very much thank you And it's a real shame the whole 25 couldn't be here this evening, but well done. Our next award this evening is for the Innovation of the Year. Now, this award goes to an individual or a team that has developed and implemented a brand new initiative, an initiative that has made a very significant contribution to the service or has made our communities safer. So let's hear a little bit about our shortlisted nominees. Innovation of the Year, the I Need My Space campaign. I Need My Space was formulated as a response to a problem that crews had been having out um, on the ground in terms of experiencing bad driving, uh, blocking their way on the way to incidents, but also bad parking outside of stations. We relied largely on social media. We got some great footage from the guys in fleet um, showing exactly um, what it's like for the engines out on the road and how they can be hindered by um, inconsiderate drivers or, or motorists who are unaware of how they should be reacting. Anecdotally, I've heard uh, lots of success stories from firefighters where people are parking more sensibly. They feel they've got more authority to um, challenge people who are parking outside their station. It's, it's very um, flattering to be nominated for the award. Also, um, I hope for the stations without who um, it really couldn't have had the impact it has. The ICE Project. 
So the OSH project stands for Intervention Communication Education. We work together with partner agencies, Tess Valley Borough Council, Hampshire Fire and Rescue and the local secondary schools in Romsey. And what we do, we identify young people that may be at risk of offending. We're trying to set the, the young people on the right path from a very early age, showing them the wrongs and rights, how a, a, a silly mistake this early in their lives from sort of you know, under the age of 16 can actually have a very, very negative effect on their, their career path they choose to take. Um, a small criminal record will isolate them or exclude them from lots of jobs within, certainly within the services. We've recently had the military um, from Middle Wallop Army Air Corps that have taken them to the, the air base there and run some drills with them. They've also shown them the Apache helicopter. A couple of students come and said, you know what, I, I think I want to start doing a career in the fire service. But that's always a positive thing. Actually, we may have just set them up now to, to knuckle down at, at school, get the exam results they need. A lot of people put a lot of hard work into it. Do have challenging moments with, with some of the young people's behaviour, but that's what we're here for. Fantastic nominees. I am delighted to announce that the innovation of the year goes to the I Need My Space campaign. Please welcome on stage Simon, Anthony and Pete. Gentlemen, would you like to come join us? As you may well know, ladies and gentlemen, this campaign was so successful, it started locally and then turned into a national brand. I need my space right throughout the UK. Well done, congratulations. Now, our next awards and medals go to people who have worked for the service for some considerable time, 20 years and more in many cases. So it now gives me great pleasure to invite the Lord Lieutenant of Hampshire, Mr Nigel Atkinson Esquire, to introduce and present the Long Service and Good Conduct medals. Thank you very much. Chairman, Chief Officer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me here this evening to present these Long Service and Good Conduct medals. It is a huge honour to be able to present them on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. Tonight we'll see, with all the award recipients, this common thread of dedicated service. And it's something that I see in my travels around the county. And with that, I'd like to take this opportunity, on behalf of the people of Hampshire, to thank you for everything you do to keep us safe. So thank you very much. And I'd particularly like to take this opportunity to thank the Chief Officer for all he's done over the years with the um, Fast Service. And have a good evening. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, our first recipient this evening, um, someone who is at the moment a temporary crew manager on Blue Watch at Rushmore, crew manager Ian Gregory. Ian. Thank you very much, congratulations. Uh, now a firefighter who served at Alton Fire Station for the last 20 years, firefighter Pete Lemon. Pete. Congratulations, Pete. And now a highly valued member of the team at Emsworth, firefighter Steve Winter. Steve.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next awards this evening are the 25-year certificates. Please let me uh, welcome back on stage the chairman of the authority, Chris Carter. Chris. Let me start this evening with the first of our 25-year certificates with someone who is now a crew manager but joined at West Sussex Fire Brigade back in 1992, crew manager Guy Andrews. Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I think we have a bit of a substitution. Do I understand that actually Guy's wife is here instead? Did, is he, is he, he's actually out. He's out. So we have... Service continues 24-7. Yeah, it, 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 yes. And I think, if anything, that is the moment of the evening. Guy is not here, but please come and join us on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure if, uh, if he was here this evening and hadn't been called out, he, I'm sure, would be saying that actually the importance of friends and family and it is only right that you receive that on his behalf tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for our next 25 years certificate, the current internal communications officer in the media and communications team at headquarters, Deborah Beaton. Deborah. Brilliant. Congratulations, Deborah. <laughs> So everyone shuffles in for the photographs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Uh, someone I know a lot of people here will know this evening, someone who began their career in fire control in 1992, group manager of control, Ingrid Leonard. Ingrid, come and join us. Been involved in so many high profile projects over her time with the service. Most recently, the Networked Fire Control Services Partnership, currently Group Manager in Fire Control. Ingrid, congratulations, thank you. And, ladies and gentlemen, for our last 25 year certificate this evening, someone who joined at Liphook Fire Station in 1992, now Station Manager Andrew Weeks. Andrew, come and join us. Andrew, as you may know, has served during his career at Winchester, Basingstoke, Arlesford and Roxford, currently a manager in the academy at uh, the service headquarters. Congratulations, Andrew. Well done. Thank you. Let's move on now another five years to our 30-year uh, medal recipients. And uh, Dave, I understand you're going to present these for us. Fantastic. You're, you can both, st why don't you both stay here? Fantastic. Um, <laughs> let's, oh, don't, don't, don't start. Uh. <laughs> right, let's start with our first recipient of the 30 year award tonight. Someone who is currently with White Watch. Please welcome on stage firefighter control, Julie Barton. Julie. <laughs> Many people here tonight know Julie previously served on red and blue watch in fire control also during her career was a uh, fire setter interventionist practitioner as 
well. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Julie. Thank you. Now, this next person who is getting our 30 year award started on his 18th birthday at Botley as a retained firefighter. Please welcome on stage group manager Tony Deacon. Tony. <laughs> As they shuffle over, I, I don't know whether anyone here in the room is aware that uh, Tony is third generation firefighter, grandfather and father before him as a family. They've served for 91 years. Tony, well done. Uh, now to someone who uh, has been a retained firefighter in Alton. Please welcome on stage to receive his certificate, firefighter Steve Lowry. Steve. Steve also works at the moment as an operator at Serco, tracking satellites, and actually wanted to make a special mention this evening uh, to his support that he gets from his family, Paula, and his daughters and his grandchildren. Well done, Steve. Thank you. Our next recipient joined the fire service while working as an apprentice production engineer for a local pharmaceutical company. On stage, please, firefighter Chris Mockett. Chris. <laughs> There was a lot of whooping from table number four then uh, when Chris's name was called out. Um, also, Lee also works at the moment in uh, contact lenses as well. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, our next firefighter joined in 1987. Yes, actually 30 years ago. 1987. Um, was actually uh, based at the workshops in uh, Winchester. Please welcome on stage firefighter Steve Payne. Steve. Steve now based at the headquarters as a service technician in the Fleet Maintenance Centre. Uh, and many people will know Steve, of course. Um, he has served at Winchester, Eastleigh, obviously currently in the service headquarters. Well done, Steve. Thank you. Uh, next recipient, uh, actually someone who started as a retained firefighter, then became full-time in 1991. Uh, served in many different places. Watch manager Dave Stevens. Dave, would you like to come and join us? Congratulations, Dave. Currently watch manager at South Sea Fire Station. Uh, served also at St Mary's, Copner, and at the service headquarters as well. Dave, many congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Uh, someone who's worked in fire control for 25 years, watch manager Pete White. Pete. And there was a lot of whooping from table one, I think, when that name was read out. A lot of laughter now as well. The RDS support manager for the New Forest Group, well done. Our next recipient sadly can't be with us this evening, uh, but somebody who joined the service in June 1987, serving on both Red and White Watch at Fairham Fire Station. Big round of applause. Hopefully he might well be watching us online this evening for firefighter Rob Young.
Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to 35 years. 35 years, I'm just trying to work out what might have been in the charts when these people were first starting their career in 1982. There's probably a lot of black eyeliner going on at the time. What, which one, who would like to? <laughs> Chris is taking this one then. First, 30, yes, 35 years, yes, 35 years. Um, I'm trying to find out actually whether this person is with us this evening because we are really hoping that he was going to be able to join us. Currently on White Watch at Fareham Fire Station, also a retained firefighter at Bishop Swaltham. Do we have in the audience firefighter Andrew Gusman? No, but if he is watching online, let's just let him know how much we're thinking of him this evening. And I can see now there is a gap at table six. So, uh, Andrew, if you're watching, or if you watch this back online, much missed this evening, and many, many congratulations. We'll make sure, obviously, your award gets to you. Um, now, again, another, because if you think we're going back now 35 years, so these are 18-year-olds, dare I say, starting their, their career. Uh, this is someone who began their career in Surrey in 1982, aged 18 as a retained firefighter. Please welcome on stage station manager Tim Pringle. Tim. <laughs> Tim, who has uh, served at many locations, including Rushmore, Basingstoke, Cosham. Oh, and he's just dropped it. Which <laughs> it's all fine. It's all, all fine. Um, yes, now back. It says here at the best run station in the, in the county, Rushmore. Is that right? Best run one? Yes. <laughs> Now, we thought we were doing well at 35 years. We have one very special 40-year bar and lapel badge this evening. Uh, this is somebody who has served his local community on the same station and same watch for a total of 41 years. Firefighter Kevin Bicknell. Kevin. <laughs> team here this evening there was a lot of shouting would you just like to get on your feet and support Kevin just one more time because everyone's going yes brilliant well done <laughs> I didn't say actually but it's the Red Rill Hill fire station in Southampton on Green Watch and all career absolutely amazing uh, finally the chairman would now like to introduce and present some certificates of service to former members of the hampshire fire and rescue authority chris would you like to say a few words yes please do ladies and gentlemen um, I, th I, th I think you'll be aware that the, the service itself um, has been going through a lot of reform in the last uh, few years um, and it was appropriate that the authority um, looked at itself also uh, and reformed itself. So, um, it, to use a hackneyed phrase, it was a bit like turkeys voting for Christmas um, because the, the authority voted to reduce its numbers from 25 down to 10. Um, that was a tough call um, for some of the members of the authority. And, I have considerable respect for those who took that tough decision and four of them are here tonight and we recognise them for their service to uh, the, the uh, fire authority and of course um, to the fire service across Hampshire as well. 
So first of all, we've got um, Jane Franken. Jane, Jane Frank, would you like to come and join us? Let's take a photograph with you, Jane. Uh, Councillor Jane Frankham, in addition to her work on the authority, Jane has served as a borough councillor since 1998, currently supporting her son Paul, who is the current mayor, and she is uh, there as the mayoress as well. Jane, many thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Right, so the next person that uh, Chris would like to honour this evening is a town, district and Hampshire county councillor with almost 30 years experience working in local government. Councillor David Harrison. Incidentally, a former chartered insurer, David has uh, lived in Totten in the New Forest all his life, playing a big role in community affairs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another person now with a very proud history of serving as a councillor in their local area. Please welcome on stage Robin McIntosh. Robin has a very proud history of serving as a councillor in his local area of Purbrook and Stake South for a total of uh, 16 years, I believe, till May this year. Congratulations, Robin. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, there is one other person that sadly can't be with us this evening. Um, unfortunately, wasn't unable to, to join us, but I know you wanted also to thank... Councillor Mark Cooper this evening. Well done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I was going to say two other people, but maybe I should rephrase that and it'll become obvious why in a moment. It's two other members of uh, the Fire family, if I can put it that way, who obviously you will understand why are obviously no longer with us and will not be here this evening. Just a couple of moments now to say farewell to two very much loved members of the Fire Investigation Dog Team. As you'll be very, very well aware, the brother and sister Saxon and Inca, they actually retired, uh, was it from active duty in 2015? Um, after serving a total of, if you work it out in dog years, um, I believe together they were 126 dog years. So, uh, yeah, I know, I was just thinking that. I mean, we wouldn't have a table big enough for all those certificates. Um, I don't actually think you can pin the medals on either, Dave. I, I, I think another authority would be after you if you tried to do that. Um, they actually attended more than 500 operational incidents, the pair of them, where they were vital, as you all know, in, in securing many convictions. Um, Graham Howlett, their handler, sadly unable to be with us this evening. However... He did send a message uh, to say Saxon and Inca were a pleasure to work with. Such talented, lovely natured dogs. And I'm so proud of what they achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to our Community Recognition Awards. Councillor Chris Carter, if you would like to join us back on stage. Chris, <laughs> come on. <laughs> now, as Chris makes his way to the stage here, our first category is Partnership of the Year, and this is sponsored by Fire Angel. Let's take a look at this year's nominations. Partnership of the Year, sponsored by Fire Angel. Rushmore Fire Station and the local community care team. For the last two years, we've been working in the uh, Rushmore Fire Station, that's the community nurses, and we've been uh, jointly working with the fire safest to do safe and well checks which is basically checks in patients' homes to make sure that their homes are safe. The people who are the most uh, at risk 
are those who have some level of vulnerability, whatever that may be. Now, working with a team of care professionals allows us to focus in and hone on those vulnerabilities. And it also allows us the opportunity to refer on to other partner agencies. It was very strange when we first came to the fire service, the station. That's an old place for a nurse's base. Little did we know, two years down the line, that it's made massive difference to the way that all of us work, really. We've realised that actually joint working with the fire service is the ideal way to um, work together to make these patients' homes um, safer for them. CIMEX 2017. So CIMEX is a very large exercise now. That's developed from something that was much smaller. It's associated with the University of Portsmouth Master's course in Crisis and Disaster Management. For 2017, we have an additional partner, an additional lead agency called L2S2. It's a huge exercise with over 2,000 people involved, over 30 different organisations. So as a partnership exercise, it is second to none. So the scenario for the 2017 exercise was a large earthquake, which happened to take place shortly after a very serious weather situation. One of the major benefits from my perspective for CIMEX is that it's the chance for everyone to come together and exercise the way that it would operationally happen uh, with all the interaction, the Asian collaboration that needs to take place at an actual operation incident. It, it is a great piece of work that I know they've put many, many hours, blood, sweat and tears into and I think deserves recognition. Southampton Partnership Working. Okay, really pleased to nominate the team that I have. Uh, I think the working relationship between um, ourselves and the police this year in Southampton has been absolutely super. We're involved with lots of collaborative work within the Southampton group and there's, there's a few pilots and a few trials of things that we're, we're involved with. There's sort of three key areas really. Um, one is uh, some work we do, some really good work we do with the police in regards to uh, patrols. So uh, the police have identified um, lots of areas where there was having issues with burglaries. A plan was put together so we could, that we could have a presence and to assist them uh, perhaps on returning back from fire calls. We've all got our own skill sets, um, so it's really nice to, to understand the, the pressures that they're under. There's quite a few things that we can really help each other with. I think this is a good reward for that going above and beyond in terms of breaking your ground for the fire and the police service. Long may it continue and and may we in the future find other activities that collaboratively we can work on together. Wonderful nominees. <laughs> so please let me invite to stage James King, who is the Director of Trade at Spruce Safety Products, the manufacturer of Fire Angel Smoke Alarms. James, would you like to come and join us to present this award, please? Thank you. So the winner of the 2017 Partnership of the Year Award, as voted for by Hampshire Fire and Rescue staff, is Rushmore Fire Station, the local community care team. <laughs> Phil and Julia, please come and join us. It's an amazing sort of exercise and engagement. It's a working relationship that sort of helps protect some of the most vulnerable local people. These safe and well visits are actually incredibly well targeted and many of them carried out as joint visits. And uh, plans are foot in the future to incorporate police community officers as well. Congratulations, well done. <laughs> Our second award in this category is the Supporting Organisation of the Year. Now, this goes to the organisation that has shown considerable support, unfailing support, to Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. So let's take a look at the shortlisted nominees. Supporting Organisation of the Year, the Bewley Estate. Well, the, there's always been a um, fire station in the village. Fire station first started by the Montagues, uh, by the second Lord Montague of Bewley, um, and it was run by his workers. Over the years, that's changed over to um, Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, but it's still as important today as it was then. Bewley Estate are a massive supporter of the fire brigade. It's a long-standing tradition to be 
part of the estate and working and providing retained cover for the village, which is a great asset for Bewley. The staff that work uh, for Bewley are allowed to uh, be on call. When they get back, they're not docked time, you know, they're, they're, it's seen as a real important part of, of our working day. Most of the calls we're going on aren't in the village. Um, so, so Bewley are really supporting um, the county. Police Constable Michael Batten. I've nominated PC Mike Batten, uh, one of my colleagues um, from Hampshire Police Roads Police Unit. Chaz and I originally started working together um, back in about 2008 and we gradually put together a series of exercises that were designed to really get the police and the fire service working together, prison, principally the hazmat officers. And they culminated in an exercise that we did earlier this year back in April, exercise winner. Um, we staged a, a helicopter crash with a real airframe and um, had fire, police and ambulance, the hazardous area response team, um, all engaged in a multi-agency exercise. In his role, um, he, he's basically stepped up and above uh, what other, uh, other officers have done really, because it's his passion and desire to um, make Hampshire safer. It's, I, I guess, recognition of the work that, you know, particularly Chaz and I, but everybody's done over the last sort of nine, ten years in sort of Hampshire. This, to me, would mean a lot to me, nominating him, and I know as a very, very personal friend, it would mean an absolute lot to him as well. Pabulum Catering. I've nominated Jacob and his team in the canteen because I think they embody some of the principles, really, which we like to uh, work towards at Hampshire Fire. Um, they're a really strong team, they've got tremendous pride in their job. They're a very small team of only three people and I feel that they unlock our potential. We provide breakfast, we do lunch, we do obviously events as well if needs be. The new, new recruits graduation was one of the biggest events we were doing. It was a big buffet for over 140 people I believe. And of course our team is fairly small, it's just three of us in here. So yeah, it was quite a challenge. Just to be able to provide good food for these guys and have a little bit of a laugh is, is, is great, yeah. An army marches on its stomach and I feel that they allow us to do that really, really well. Once we got nominated it was absolutely exciting for us, we were ec ecstatic at the moment. Of course we don't know if we even won the award or not, but I mean just to be nominated is, is just a great feeling for us really. I am delighted to announce this evening that the winner it's the Bewley Estate. With the Honourable Mrs. Mary Montague Scott and Chris Morley representing the estate and firefighters Rob and Carl, please join us. As you were beginning to hear in the video, it, uh, the Estate Fire Brigade with staff and volunteers actually started in 1909 and then continued until 1947. They are the only contributor of an encore firefighter's Bewley Fire Station well into the 21st century. Well done everybody, congratulations. <laughs> Now we move on this evening to our Voluntary Recognition Awards, covering charity and uh, volunteer activities. Now, the first of these awards this evening is our Charity Award, and this basically recognises the importance of charitable award. Now, this year's award has once again been sponsored by ExxonMobil at the Forley Refinery. Let's hear from our shortlisted nominees. Charity Supporter of the Year, sponsored by ExxonMobil. Fording Bridge Fire Station. Um, well, the fire station's always been very focused on fundraising for charity. Um, for 22 years now we've done a 10k road race, uh, we've done the Three Peaks Challenge four times and for the last two years we've done Party in the Park. They're so dedicated, They're, they do something every year, it's not a one-off for them, they are constantly thinking about what's next. The reason we've done it is mostly for people close to our heart so um, other other stations where they've had a bit of a crisis or you know a disaster importantly it's all of them they're not you know one or two people on the station the whole station gets involved i'd imagine probably over the last 20 years we've made in excess of 25,000 pounds we have got a really strong team here at Ford and Ridge and they they all help me out um, i usually come up with the silly ideas and they they support me and we we pull it off station manager andy pillar 
I think Andy deserves the award um, because he's been working tirelessly over the last um, seven years to raise money for Leukaemia Busters. My best friend passed away in 2010, um, which was obviously quite an emotional time for me. Um, so all of my charity work is based for Leukaemia Busters. Last year I decided that I was going to set myself a challenge to raise 40,000 by the time I was 40. I've now reached 33,000, so I've only got 7,000 to go, which I'm pretty confident that I will achieve the 40. A few years ago I completed the marathon in London. From then I've just gradually increased to different events um, and the biggest one this year was the Ironman in France. Uh, so on average I was, I was training six days a week. Um, on most days it was like three to four hours a day um, but I lost lots of family time and personal time um, which I'll never get back but I know that all the work that I do is for charity and it's in memory of my best friend that passed away. Tadley Fire Station. Oliver's got a rear brain condition called Missing Carefully. He has no ability to use any of his limbs, so he's completely immobile. Um, currently they're um, sort of struggling with where to accommodate him because of his needs. Um, he needs extra support with uh, being hoisted in and out of bed. It is worrying now, when he's like nine, ten, how on earth I'm actually going to physically lift him. We um, went on a stretcher walk around uh, all the North Group fire stations. Well, we chose that because um, it sort of had a bit of a, a meaning um, because uh, Louise, Oliver's mum, has to pick him up, carry him. It was very challenging. Some of the walks, some of the walking parts I was involved with, they did kind of feel like they were never ending. It, you know, it was, it was very challenging. So the money is going towards uh, the provision of some equipment for Oliver for his home. If you were to see me lifting him in and out his chair and things like that, you would see like me not having to do that would be a massive difference to us. We are, we're really grateful, aren't we, Oliver? Hey? Yeah. There's some amazing people around, aren't there? They really, really are. Before revealing the winner, I'd like to invite Simon Downing, the refinery manager at Forley, to join us to come and present the award. Simon, would you like to come join us on stage? So this is the Charity Award, and this year I am delighted to say that the winner Station Commander Andy Pillar. Andy, come and join us. for Andy what back in 2010 and all these uh, these charitable events have just grown and grown whether or not he'd say they got madder or not I'm not absolutely sure um, he kept mentioning the London Marathon what was your time Can you... congratulations three hours 27 absolutely superb congratulations well done And in, in, incidentally, um, the Iron Man. Has anyone else in the room ever done an Iron Man event? Um, it is the 2.4 mile swim, it's the 26.2 mile run, and then it is the 112 cy mile cycle. So, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Well done. Many congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to our Firefighters Charity Award. Now, this is made by Hampshire Fire and Rescue to recognise support for the charity by an individual or team. Now this award is selected by the Hampshire Committee of the Firefighters Charity and Service Champion, Assistant Chief Officer Andy Bowers. Now, please join us to present the award, Andy. Thank you, Andy. It's nice to see you here rather than just in some of the videos. We've been seeing a lot of you this evening. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. Was that with all those sausage and it egg was, sandwiches that were... Oh, all right, OK, OK, OK. You sure about that? Yeah, it's all good. I am very honoured and very proud to announce that this year's Firefighters Charity Award 
goes to Jasper Taylor. Jasper. the shouts from over that side of the room. His charity efforts are legendary. Keen supporter of the firefighters charity. He was the rep for the station, the area coordinator and a firefighter home visitor. Congratulations, Jasper. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now these, this next group of people, really, really amazing, phenomenal people. We're going to end this section of the awards with our Volunteer of the Year. Now this recognises the invaluable work that volunteers do to support the fire service. So let's take a look at the work of some of our shortlisted volunteers. Volunteer of the Year, the Academy Volunteers. Well, we look after all the appliances, all the training school appliances for the Academy. We look after all the equipment and make sure that all the appliances are fully stowed and we just make sure that everything is as it should be when they're required for the training at the academy. Gets me out of the house um, after having my little girl um, and stopping working after so many years. I felt like I needed something to, you know, get me out, get me doing stuff, get a uniform on, I get a sense of pride that I'm doing something to help. It's just a great thing to be able to give something back to the fire service and the community. I'd like to put tea to help help you know the local area so you know people get the most out of it. I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless. Uh, didn't in, didn't really expect to be nominated. Oh, it feels great. It you know it validates that what I'm doing actually helps um, and that I'm making a difference. The Hampshire Police and Fire Heritage Trust. A group of uh, retired and ex-service personnel um, have come together to form the uh, Hampshire Police and Fire Heritage Trust and have subsequently set about uh, transforming uh, a vacant space within Solent Sky um, into a collection for both organisations to demonstrate the uh, proud history of both organisations. We came down here, put a call out to retired guys to come in and uh, help build uh, what is now um, a publicly accessed museum. We've got uniforms, uh, tunics and helmets um, dating back to the late 19th century, truncheons, handcuffs. It's certainly a passion uh, uh, project for myself because I believe that if you, if you don't um, preserve the, the history then you, you don't preserve the traditions of the organisation as it is today. But it's nice that somebody's thought that, uh, uh, that what we've done down here is, uh, is a good job. We're, we're delighted to have been uh, thought as being worthy of nomination. Cliff Paffett. My name's Cliff Paffett and um, I work for Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service as a volunteer. Um, I, do, I started off doing home safety visits. Uh, as with all volunteering things, you end up doing other things as well. So I've got involved with the Prince's Trust. The main thing with um, guys from Prince's Trust is that uh, uh, they lack, most of them seem to lack confidence. So it's really good to actually build their confidence up and it's really brilliant when you see at the end of the course at least two or three guys actually ending up getting a job out of it. And in fact I was waiting for a bus in Winchester about a month ago and the bus that came before mine, uh, the guy opened the door to change his um, wing mirror and it was one of the guys from the course we've done. So he's actually got a job as a bus driver so it's really, really good. Well, I, I like volunteering with uh, Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service because I think they're a great bunch of people to work for. I feel that like I'm being helpful in the community and hopefully I'm actually doing something worthwhile in the community. Ladies and gentlemen, our Volunteer of the Year. This was from Staff Boating, and I am delighted to reveal that the Volunteer of the Year, the Hampshire Police and Fire Heritage Trust. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> Just remember
remember from your, your little bit on the video about this being a passion and uh, it is looking back at everything in the, in the past, remembering that heritage, but also looking to the future as well and not forgetting those that have gone first. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I think the uh, the awards up to this day, just uh, up to up to this point, show the importance of the people that work with us in the service, um, and I'm thankful for all of uh, our partners that have just contribute to Hampshire being such a, a safe and wonderful place to live, um, and also thank you for the volunteers. I think without the volunteers, which are, who have only grown in our service in probably the last five years, the contribution they make to our work in the community is extraordinary. And I've been talking recently as well, as I moved to my retirement, about the importance of history and the importance of tradition um, and how that is the bedrock of a great service. And, and I'm, I'm really um, pleased that Alan and others have put together the, um, the Southern Sky Museum down in Southampton. Um, and, and it does capture the very essence of the best traditions of both the police force and the fire service. And I'm really pleased that we've established that in Hampshire, like in no other county in, in, in the country. So my thanks and congratulations, and hopefully that trophy will go with others in the future, but also some of the great artifacts that they've captured uh, for all time in that museum. Thank you. Mm, many congratulations, that was wonderful. <laughs> well, our next section of the awards, the Chief Officers Awards. Um, first of all, we're gonna start with Team of the Year. So please, let's take a look at our shortlisted nominees. The Chief Officers Team of the Year. Blue Watch, St Mary's Fire Station. This year, I felt important that we did something with the local community. So I contacted um, the Southampton Muslim Council and we agreed to hold an event for Eid. We didn't expect hundreds of people to turn up, so it was like most of the community within St Mary, even further afield, had turned up. During the day I had people from the community telling me it's the first time they've ever had someone in Southampton outside the Muslim community organise an event for them. Yeah, definitely go extra mile. They do take time out of their time where they're not on duty. It's, I think it's changed some attitudes at station and massive links into the community now. And both the communities are overwhelmed with what we've done. With regards to that, it's opened up barriers for different communities to want to come and celebrate their events with us as well. I know it would mean a lot to them for winning it because of all the hard work they've put in. The Community Safety Team. I've nominated the Community Safety Team because I feel that this year they've had a really strong campaign. From the beginning of the year when they introduced the new literature, from the work that they've done introducing Safe and Sound. Not everybody qualifies for a safe and well visit so there's kind of a hole left um, and safe and sound fills that hole nicely while offering people specific tailored home fire safety advice when they visit the site online. I think it's really important that we're able to reassure the public of, the, of our key vestiges um, following the tragic incidents of this year. I believe that it's helping save lives, it's certainly informing people more I think for the community safety team, this would mean a recognition of the work that they have achieved this year, a recognition of, of the ways that they've managed to engage the public. It's really exciting work actually. Um, you get involved heavily with the community, so interacting with the community, working as a team, is, it's a real pleasure to be fair. Prince Philip Barracks. I've nominated the team because of the uniqueness of the facility. Uh, and training that we have here in Hampshire uh, and obviously the professionalism, work and drive from the team to get us to a place where we are today. But this team have had to start from nothing. You know, we've been, uh, had to find sites, we've had to be fairly innovative. I think the, the benefits that we have up at the Borden site are the fact that it's a real building. We don't pretend anything, everything actually is there, so it's as you see it. That makes Hampshire safer. You know, our crews are better confident, better equipped. We're helping promote that through realistic training, um, through challenging our crews in, in the right way and, and presenting them with situations that, that we believe would happen out there on, on the road. It's a big team effort, there's, there's a lot of people involved right through the academy, it's uh, certainly uh, quite a big beast to tame and it takes a lot of effort and, and a lot of work. Wickham Fire Station. 
Well, I've known Wickham Fire Station for, for many years in various roles, and they've always displayed you know, the, the, a huge amount of, of commitment. We are a station that takes a great deal of pride from being on the run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to provide the service, not just with our fire engine, but also our co-responder car for the community that we live in and work in also. They've recently taken part in the National BA Challenge. So the BA Challenge has been going, um, certainly Wickham being involved now for four or five years. We would all work together trying to fine tune each of our, each of our roles so that we, we could score the best points possible. They came second, they won silver and I think that is a real demonstration of their commitment to their skills and the fire service as, as a team. A, a really vibrant, lively, strong uh, station you know, and I think they're an exemplar for, for the whole service, not just the retained but whole time and retained. Amazing nominees. <laughs> Would you like to announce or shall I? The 2017 Team of the Year, Wickham Fire Station. <laughs> Many, many congratulations. Um, under the leadership of watch manager Nigel Blackman, they consistently provide an outstanding level of fire cover in the region of around 99%, which is probably the best retained cover in the county. Many, many congratulations to you all. Wonderful, congratulations. <laughs> Move on now to our Individual of the Year Award. This is recognising somebody who has made an outstanding contribution in support of making life safer in our communities or an outstanding contribution to improvements in the service. Let's take a look at our shortlisted nominees. The Chief Officer's Individual of the Year, Rachel Cameron. Rachel is our service desk manager. She manages the first line and the database team, making sure that they're on target, they're following procedures. It's really varied. We're here to help support in a number of fire applications, hardware, accounts, everything. Rachel is probably one of the most kind-hearted, most hard-working people I know. I feel happy about what I do and if it's helping someone that's the main element I feel of the job. Not only do people have pride for working for the fire service, they, they, they're they interested in what they do and finding things, fixing them, everything like that. It's just never stops but it's always fun. I, I can remember the day she started and she was so nervous and I just watched her develop and grow and I would probably say to her, you know, just keep on going, the sky's the limit for you. Firefighter Martin Miezi. Martin works at um, Gosport on White Watch as a firefighter. So the station were, were tasked with coming up with a new crew model for the station. Uh, Martin, right from the outset, um, got heavily involved with it and, and basically started to use his uh, research skills, his analytical skills uh, to come up with a new model. So it involved um, not only coming up with the model, um, analysing the statistics for the model to work with the number of people that the station was being reduced to, uh, but also looking for um, solutions right at the outset and, and all the way through it. So Martin has, has been instrumental really, he's been extremely driven, um, he's gained the trust of the station more importantly, and has basically found himself out of his depth on occasions, so he is a firefighter on White Watch, but has, has clearly gone above and beyond his role. Uh, I just want to say thank you, thank you for all the hard work you put into it. Uh, the station are, are very engaged um, through quite a difficult time and, and Martin has clearly had an impact on that and uh, building trust um, with his peers and helping to support the station through quite a difficult time. Sam Getlin. So in my role I'm responsible for all the video content that comes out of Hampshire Fire Rescue Service. So I go around and do sort of all the campaigns, um, the internal uh, monthly news bulletin Fire Flash. 
So my job really is to, to go around and get footage of all the great work really that's going on around the county. What I love about my job is there are so many different stories in the organisation, there are so many different great things going on and I just love the ability to kind of tell that not only to staff but also to um, the wider public. I've tried to really kind of push the boundaries a bit since in the time that I've been here and kind of try things that perhaps the organisation hasn't tried before. Just try new ideas and see what works and what doesn't. I was really, really surprised to be nominated. Um, it feels really good to be nominated, but at the same time, um, I wasn't really expecting it. I mean, I suppose I'm just trying to do the best job I can, and if, if someone feels that, um, that that's worth a nomination, then, then great. But, but yeah, I'm going to continue, continue what I'm doing, really. amazing people. I imagine there isn't just one that you might want to, uh, to give this award to. You've actually decided to give two awards this evening. So please, for the first award for Individual of the Year, please join us on stage, Rachel Cameron. <laughs> thing as well for one of your colleagues to say that they remember your your first day and to say never known such a kind-hearted and capable and wonderful person Rachel thank you ever so much congratulations <laughs> and our second award tonight for individual our individual of the year goes to someone who, very sadly, is unable to join us this evening. But huge congratulations, and if you are watching with us online this evening, many congratulations to firefighter Martin Miesi. Martin, well done. <laughs> if I could have station manager Dean Hodges on stage, please. Dean, come and join us. Dean is the person that nominated Martin, so I know you'll, uh, you'll get the award to him. Many thanks, Dean, for collecting it on Martin's behalf. Should we get a photograph of you as well? Maybe you can superimpose the heads or something. <laughs> Dean, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Before I leave the stage and the individual awards there and the team awards, my congratulations to both. Um, really hard decisions for me. It's much easier when we put it out to the organisation. We have a voting online and, and, they, and the organ it's really important. All the other categories were chosen by the staff of our service. Those two, the team award and then the individual awards, are, are painstaking decisions for me. And my thanks to Sam from our media team. You have seen the quality of his work tonight, but also on the video you see how humble he is about the role that he plays in so many of the environments and how he projects the very best of our service. And my congratulations to Sam for being nominated. But then the other two individuals come from very different backgrounds, play very different roles in the service. But what is co common between them is that they go beyond what is expected of them. And as I started my piece this, this evening about the tremendous efforts of our individuals, I think they just amplify and, and, and show the very value of people from all different walks of life, not just on the front line, but also in our support teams as well, about how everybody in Team Hampshire makes a difference to the safety and protection of our communities. And so my congratulations to those two individuals, but I know that they themselves would say there's just so many other individuals around them that deserve a award of that sort. But my congratulations this year to our two winners of the individual award. Thank many you, Many congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to our final award of the evening, and this is the Chairman's Award, selected personally by Councillor Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear a little bit about tonight's winner. The Chairman's Award. 
I've had the pleasure of knowing Kevin Taylor, who's now known as Jasper, since we joined up as recruits in March 1988. And he's taken up various roles with a charity and fundraising and also as a diversity liaison officer. So Jasper's been involved in charity work um, from the station for about 25 years, mainly through the Firefighters Charity, but he's done so much more. He's done uh, charity walks for dementia. He does work with the Blind and Deaf Association. You name it, Jasper will get involved. The OIPs do, uh, which Jasper organises and has organised recently, uh, it's in its 37th year. It started off being um, on the station in just the mess room with a firefighter's mum who'd recently lost her partner, uh, bringing some friends down for afternoon tea and before long it had to expand into the appliance bay. It's been down to South Sea Pier and now we host it at the Portsmouth Guildhall and we have 360 um, older persons coming every year. Jasper's role is everything from organising the venue, to inviting people to come, to involving himself in the acts. So last year we had a really good example of a lovely old lady who, the moment she was picked up, burst into tears because it was the first time she'd been out in a year. Goes the extra mile just because he doesn't, he doesn't have to do that, it's just because he wants to do that to do the best he can. Jasper's a really nice guy, he's just really friendly, wants the best for everyone, wants to do the best for everyone. He's a very genuine person. He's always willing to do the best he can, he wants to do things because he wants to do, wants to help people. He's a very, very caring person. He never stops really, I think it's always playing in the back of his mind. He has his little red diary which is his, his, never leaves his side. He'll walk down the street and just think of something or someone that needs help and by the end of the day he'll already be planning what he's going to do. It is a shame to see him retiring from the fire service but he's got so much potential in fulfilling his new role. I think he'll be really busy. People will remember Jasper. I think people will always remember the work he's done. He's touched a lot of people's lives. I don't think Jasper realises how much people appreciate the work that he's done. I know on the watch we sometimes have a bit of a laugh and a joke about him getting out of drills maybe, especially in his last year of service. But actually it's because the work he's doing is really beneficial to the people he's affecting. Thank you. On behalf of the station, the group, Everyone he's in common contact with and has changed their lives. Thank you. Jasper, come and join us. Don't go, don't go, you're not allowed to go yet. Chris, would you like to take the microphone because I know you want to say a few words. Th thank you, Sasha. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the winners tonight. We've, we've had an absolutely magnificent evening, haven't we? Um, now, the Chairman's Award was introduced last year um, to, for, for an individual who'd gone above and beyond um, and that's what it's all about with Jasper. That's all I wanted to just say to you. So congratulations again. Let's give him another big round of applause. Would you like to have some words? I think he's good. Come on. Let me take you up. Come on, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, Jasper. Thank you, everybody. Um, I always say, uh, with anything we do, it's, it's a team, team effort. Um, everything I do, I can't do without everybody else that gets involved. So this is for the team. Thank you very much. Jasper, I meant to ask you, do you have your little red diary on you? <laughs> Wonderful. I'd like to now invite Deputy Chief Officer Neil Odin to the stage to make the closing address. Neil, would you like to come and join us again? Thank you.
Thank you very much. And uh, as you can imagine, I've been sitting there scribbling notes. So it's a delight to be here, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your time uh, tonight. Uh, time that's spent celebrating the fine people you've heard about tonight. Time we've spent talking to each other and enjoying and celebrating uh, not only their deeds, but the deeds of what I think is one of the best organisations that I've ever come across. I'm a bit biased also, I guess. But um, I'm, I'm delighted to be here just to find, the to find some closing words. Um, you'll also be delighted to know there's probably only one round of applause left in you, I imagine. Your hands are pretty sore. So thank you for your indulgence. The first people to thank Sasha, particularly thank you to you, uh, and thank you for BBC Radio Sodom for releasing you this evening to help us. Also, thank you to the team and the organisers, particularly particular Shantha and Debbie behind the scenes over there. Shantha, sit over there. Difficult task in keeping this going. It's been an excellent award service, a ceremony for many, many years. And to keep it fresh, keep it on the edge, and keep people uh, entertained for the evening is a really quite high challenge. So for all those people behind the curtains, a quick round of applause. Thank you very much. To extend the thanks also to Michael Lane and Olivia Pinkley from the police, the constabulary of the PCC's office and the constabulary for the use of this lovely hall. Thank you very much. I teased you about the last round of applause, actually. There's a few more left. So um, I think this is one of those organisations, like the emergency services, the blue light services, are best when their metal is tested. One of those moments when we have to jump to our response and jump to a crisis or something we face. And the stories that we've heard tonight of people's commitment, bravery and, and, and challenge about everyday life. And indeed, belonging to a team that they know they're doing their part to make sure that that service is able to respond when the calling comes. So we've had 12 years of this particular award ceremony. And one of the things I would say about the Farm Rescue Service, much like probably other services that deal with crises, is that we are great in a, in a crisis as you can imagine. But we are not great at saying, you're really good at that. We're not good at finding something really positive to say about colleagues. Because as you can imagine, banter is alive and well in the Farm Rescue Service. And the thought that you have to stop and say to yourself, I wonder what nice things I can write in about my colleagues. It doesn't come naturally to us. But actually the act of doing so is so, so important. The act of understanding and thinking about your colleagues from across the organisation, saying, I wonder who has done that bit extra. I wonder who's today sweating away at a problem and trying to make it better for us all. Because it is all too easy to think, that's not going very well, that's not very good, where's my dinner? All those sorts of things that challenge us during the day. Now actually, so what we saw tonight is one, nominations from colleagues to find the very best in our organisation and to go on the camera and say why you think they're great. And for nominees, being nominated and being pretty proud of the fact that your colleagues have nominated you. And thank you for your efforts you put in over the years to deserve those nominations. Dave talked about the essence of public service. And I think that's what we've seen tonight. Those people that come to work or go volunteer for their time to make a difference. That is the essence of public service. For me, and the new role I take on in the new year, the fine balance between cutting new ground, as the Chief Officer described, and listening to others, as well as protecting our positive traditions. I think Alan's work in the museum down there, making sure that those traditions, which we are very proud of in our organisation, are maintained and kept. So our identity is our identity, and people know who we are and what we stand for. There are so many stories that I've heard tonight, so many stories the organisation is made of. And I know those who go on to retirement, I'll mention one in a second, uh, that will have stories for the rest of their lives. They'll tell children, grandchildren and beyond. That's what makes us great, our stories we tell. Through bad times, through good times, we tell stories about what we do and who we are. Iron Man Andy Pillar will tell many stories of those agonising miles, I'm sure. And I'm told, Andy, the chief's going to give you 50 quid for your pot. <laughs> well, there's a few days left here, don't you worry. Uh, Jasper Taylor. Jasper Taylor now stands for a round of applause. Jasper Taylor. <laughs> true gent and a true example of what we all aspire, hope to be one day in our lives. Our volunteers, fantastic seeing them here tonight and the work they do in the background, often unseen, often busy doing some fantastic things. Thank you for being here as well. ICT, the challenges they've had in the recent weeks, thank you Rachel, well done to the team. Really great efforts, all working hard behind the scenes, trying to get things as good as they can be. All those really make us the service that we are. 
and they allow us to talk about our, our endeavours tonight, then they also allow our communities to receive the very best service from an organisation that is there when they, need, when they need it and in times of crisis, sometimes in the dead of the night when no one sees it. So thank you to the families who are here supporting their, their loved ones tonight, because without you, this job is very, very difficult. And knowing that when the, the pager goes, or the alerter goes, knowing you're going to be home late, knowing you're not going to make it to your own award ceremony, are all examples of where wives and loved ones come in to assist. And Guy's absence tonight is testament to that, missing his own 25-year or 30-year medal, 30 medal. So all credit to you, and thank you for being here. Now, in case it wasn't mentioned earlier, our Chief Officer is retiring very shortly. Now, Dave's said tonight's not about him, and it's not. But actually, it's another example where Dave doesn't always get his own way. So um, I'm, it's been a pleasure to work with Dave, and I know as a Chief Officer, he will retire, and I'll take over from him in a new year. But this, this tradition of recognising and supporting our people will continue. Dave is about to be given the gift of time, to spend time with his family, golden gates of San Francisco, giraffes on the plains, whatever befalls him in the future, and his wife, Lynn. Thank you, Dave, for your service. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So you'll be very pleased to know, with 30 seconds to spare, that is the end of tonight's events. Thank you. There's coffee being served after this event. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your stories. Let's have many more. And enjoy the rest of the evening together, discussing and enjoying each other's company. And please have a very safe journey home. Thank you very much. It's always, always very difficult to, to follow such heartfelt words, but uh, just a couple of things just from me. Uh, which might, might sound quite boring now, but uh, if you are the proud recipient of one of our awards tonight, we do actually have the boxes for you. <laughs> There's health and safety for you. We've kept the boxes. Uh, so the actual presentation boxes, uh, you will find them in the Duke room. Now, what we're also going to ask you to do, if you are one of our winners tonight, we'd like you all to come and celebrate success together. So what we would like to do... In just a couple of moments, I'm going to invite all of you onto stage just so we can take some big group photographs, the sort of things which, you know, we can keep for the future. So in a moment, I'll ask you to come to the stage. Now, as you know, we've been streaming, live streaming the event tonight. You will be able to go back and watch this a little bit later on the YouTube channel, on uh, the Fire Service YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm sure many people will be, uh, who weren't able to be with us tonight will be doing that to also pay their tributes. This was my first time here this evening, and uh, it, it has been a wonderful evening. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for letting me listen to these stories. Can I just say that so many times we only see, you know, myself in the media, I mean, we only see sort of the events. I mean, we never get that make up those numbers, make up the incredible. rely on. So it has been an absolute honour tonight to just see some of those faces, those real people and those real stories. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this evening. Thank you for allowing me to be part of it. And well done. Congratulations. Let's have one final round of applause for everyone who's won tonight. Thank you. And yep, we have tea and coffee ready for you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll play some music now. And if I could get everyone who has uh, an award tonight to come join us on stage. Thank you.